Welcome to this MLS listings training video on how to use the matrix map search tools. I'm starting the display off on just a regular search residential um, screen, um, allowing me to search for single family, condominium, townhomes, manufactured homes, etc. And what I want to show you to start with is where you can access the map, either before you do the search or after you've entered search criteria here on this search screen and then go look at the map. So the two locations, first one down in the bottom left hand corner, you've got a map tab down there. And then if you move your eyes up to the upper right hand corner, you also have a map uh, tab right here, which allows you to look at the map and the results on the map. Uh -huh. So let's start with just a, a regular active, contingent, pending, and sold. Remember that if whenever you choose the sold category, you'll need to use the close of escrow date to tell me how far you want to go backwards in time um, or what time period you want for when those solds took place. I like to use the zero minus 30 uh, concept. Zero is today, and I'm telling the system to go 30 days back to collect up those sold listings um, in whatever city or area I use. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the single family. And let's come down here to the location area, and we'll just enter Campbell in as our demo city. All right. And if we go all the way to the very bottom of the page, um, bottom left-hand corner, you can see I've got 102 matches. And let's go get those results. This is one way to go about uh, getting to the map. If you come to the results page, you'll note that the map icon in the lower left-hand corner is no longer there. And you'll need to use the map icon in the upper right-hand corner in order to access the map. So here we are uh, in what we call the map view and what you're seeing on the map are the green homes. Those are the active listings within the Campbell Postal area. The orange homes, those are the uh, contingent and pending listings right now. And the red homes, those are listings that have sold within the last 30 days. We've got a couple different tools of how you can look at the map. We'll start here in the upper left hand corner of the page. And you'll see that we're currently working or looking at the road view. Uh, so it looks like a street map. I'm going to go down two spaces and I'm going to go to the bird's eye view. This is that satellite view of uh, the same area. And I can use um, the zoom in, zoom out tools up here in the upper right hand corner. If you don't have a mouse with a roller ball on it, um, this is how you would zoom in. And then, of course, zoom out. Now, if you've got a roller ball on your mouse like I do, I can just roll the mouse ball forward um, or backwards to zoom in, zoom out. Back over to the left-hand side of the page where we had the different views. We showed you the road view. That's the street map. We showed you the bird's eye view. That's the satellite view. The automatic view is sort of in between the two. So here we are with the road view. But as I zoom into the map, at some point, and we'll see where it goes, give me one more click, and we'll take one more, and probably right there, it's going to switch over automatically to that satellite view. Let's go ahead and switch it back to the road view. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit to show you some of the other tools that are in the system. Get it back out to where we were. Okay. Click any parcel for a pars for parcel details, meaning if I zoom in here on West Campbell Avenue and I choose this piece of property right here just across from Superior Drive and I click on it, it will actually show me who the owners are of that property. This is uh, this is going to be the tax data coming through on your map. You can click on the lot dimensions option. And it will lay out on the map the, as you can see, the lot dimensions and the total square footage of that lot. Okay, zooming back out again, let's look at some of the other tools that are available for you. And I'm going to come way back out. Let's move up here to this uh, toolbar right in the middle. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take, take a look at these three cutting tools. We've got the circles, squares and rectangles, 
and what we call a polygon. And a polygon allows you to draw any shape on the map. And in fact, it's probably the most used cutting tool there is um, in this application because we don't live in a, an exactly circular area or rectangles and squares that are perfectly aligned north, south, east, west. Um, so most of the time you'll be using that polygon tool. And we'll go through those in a second. Now, if I've got a, if I've got a shape on the map, and I want to clear that shape off, I can use this little broom right here and that will clear all the shapes off at one time. Right now it's not working because I have no shapes on the map. The next icon over is for layering and we have this great set of tools that are available to put borders or areas down on your map. So I'm going to come down here, let's put in the city line as an example and that laid down all the city lines um, and in fact it laid down the city lines for all of Santa Clara County and actually moving up I can move up here dragging my mouse across the page and now I'm up in the San Mateo County and certainly all the city lines are going to be back up there as well so you have a lot of different options here in the layering capability let's put the zip code down and we'll put the MLS areas on there and why not add the elementary school district to go with it you can actually lay down up to six different areas at one time but as you can see once you get past one or two um, selections your map becomes a little a uh, little too crowded can be a little disorienting so although you can lay down six pieces of information I don't recommend it I'm gonna go ahead and unclick these options here now we were searching back in Campbell and I want to get back to Campbell really quickly without you know having to drag my mouse around the screen I can use this little symbol right here it's called recenter and by clicking that the map will take us directly back to where we were let's go ahead and remove I've got one more line up there it looks like the zip code lines I left those up so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those out so this is your layering tool right there and then this is that recentering tool. Go back to where you were should you move the screen off where your search was um, designated. Okay, I want to look at this drop down menu right here. Okay, now my location. Uh, this would be if you've got a um, you've got a GPS system turned on on your computer. This will take you to wherever your computer is at that moment these are the different county breakdowns and I can say you know take me over to Santa Cruz County and the map will quickly adjust over to the Santa Cruz County area and if I want Santa Cruz County to show up every time I log in um, as my default location I would simply click on Santa Cruz County and then use this gear right here to tell the system to use that as my starting default Every time I log into the matrix search tool um, and I go to the map tab here in the upper right hand corner, it will bring me to Santa Cruz County. Let's move back over to Santa, uh, to Santa Clara County and to the Campbell area where I was conducting this search. And let's look at those cutting tools or those shaping tools up here on this upper menu. Now, as I said, you've got circles and squares. I'm going to highlight the circle and I'll come over here to this neighborhood. Uh, over by Hamilton Avenue for circles and for squares and rectangles I'm gonna hold my mouse button down and I'm gonna drag my mouse away from the center point and you can see it's creating that little mile marker there for me and when I let go of my mouse all homes outside of that circle will disappear and now I'm only searching inside of the circle as I said the squares and rectangles work the exact same way I highlight it I start um, I, wherever I want to start my search I drag the mouse I hold the mouse button down and I drag out from there now if you need to make a slight adjustment um, to your circle or square um, or polygon for that matter and we'll show you that one in a second I want you to look to see where my mouse is right now it's um, up here in this upper corner of this square that I've drawn I'm gonna move my mouse to the left and when it hits that line you see that little circle show up that lets me know that if the circle is there I can hold my mouse down and I can drag that line here to the left picking up a little more space it allows me to sort of fine-tune my shape 
Now, don't worry about the areas that are, you know, where the circle crosses into the square. It's not going to double count that area. So it's okay to let these two blend over each other like that. Not going to cause a problem in your search at all. Okay, I'm going to delete these two shapes. I've got a couple different ways of doing it. Um, the first way is I can find my start point uh, for these shapes. So I'm going to move this line out a little bit so you can see it. Here's my start point, that big red dot right there. I put my mouse on top of it. I get this little menu that shows up. And this allows me to delete just this shape. If I wanted to get rid of a lot of shapes all at one time, and let me draw, draw a couple of circles here just to give you an example. If I wanted to clear the whole page of all shapes, then I come up here to the broom and you can see that it's now highlighted. Um, and I can go ahead and click on that broom and all the shapes will disappear. One of the other unique aspects of the drawing tools is this. I'm going to draw a circle right here, holding my mouse down once again. And let's say that right on this corner, and in fact, I know this corner pretty well. It's a pretty busy corner. Uh, the client likes the area, but doesn't really want to live right around that major intersection of Hamilton and San Tomas Expressway. I could then take another shape, and in this case, I'll do a, a draw, a, a circle, excuse me, a rectangle. So I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to draw that rectangle right here, right inside the original shape. Then, if I want to, what I want to do is I want to exclude this area. I like the homes around it, but I want to exclude that major intersection right there. Once again, I take my mouse, I move it over to the original start point of the box, and I use the exclude this shape option down there at the bottom. And you'll see that that, that blue box has now become a red box, and I've, I've excluded that area from my overall search pattern um, of the giant radius. Okay, let's go ahead and clear those two shapes off so I can show you how to use the polygon tool. And as I said before, this is probably the most used tool um, in our mapping system. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And as an example, I just want to look at these homes down here in this area, sort of in the southwest area of, of Campbell. And so what I do in this case is I start with one click. I do not hold the mouse button down just one singular click and you can see as I move my mouse I'm starting to draw this blue line now every time I need to change direction or make a turn of some type I do another click and that anchors that point right there on the map I'm gonna come down here a click to anchor and I'm just gonna keep going doing individual clicks until I found my shape and then go back to my original start point. That's the most important part. Always go back to where you started with one final click. And all the rest of the homes in the area have disappeared. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and clear this shape off using my uh, little broom up here in the, in the toolbar. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the criteria page. And I'm going to clear off this criteria page in the lower left corner of the screen and clear everything off. Because remember I said you can either start with the search and enter in what you're looking for, or you can start with the map. So let me give you some just some tips on if you're going to go the other, other direction and identify a neighborhood first and then come back and fill in the, the remaining questions you need to ask. So we're going to go back up here to the upper right hand corner and go back to that map tab. Now remember, I have not asked anything of the search page yet. And so unique to MLS systems, if I don't ask it a question, it wants to deliver all the answers that are possible. And in this case, that would be 17 years of all active, pending, sold, canceled, withdrawn, expired listings. And so what this system is telling us right up here at the top is there's too much data to put on this map. Okay. Now, if I zoom in from here and I sort of, I, I bring the view in to try and reduce the amount of area I'm looking at um, and hopefully reduce that 5,000 maximum, the first thing you'll start to see are these bundles. So what the system is now telling me is, okay, Mark, within this little area around Abbey Drive, there are 59 listings over the last 17 years. The, the challenge with this is, as you can see, it starts to sort of clutter my screen up. And in fact, as I zoom in even farther, 
those bundles at that point, as soon as you get way down in there, the bundles will turn to homes. But still, that's a it's a pretty cluttered screen to, to be looking at, especially when you're trying to draw shapes. So here's the tip. I'm going to back out just a little bit here. Okay, back to the bundled area. Let's go real quickly back to the criteria tab. And I want you to use this beds category right up here in the upper right hand corner. And the only reason I use that one in particular is it's very close to my map tab right up here. It's the closest one to it. Now in that beds area, I, re I recommend you just put in a number that there could not possibly be that number of bedrooms in the system. Okay. And we'll go ahead and go back to the map tab now. And you can see that everything's disappeared. I can do my search. And we'll just do a quick circle right there. Now go back to the criteria tab and take out the beds and put in the information you want to look at. We'll just do active single family in this case and then come back to the map tab. And there's only one right now in that circle. Okay, if you have any more questions regarding map searching or general training questions from your MLS listings professional training staff, please feel free to contact us at prodev at mlslistings.com. That's prodev at mlslistings.com.